Hi, I'm Gene Cavassis. Hi, I'm Dylan Cavassis. When Dylan came home for winter break, we spent some time binge-watching The Mandalorian. And after we finished it, we thought, gosh, wouldn't it be cool if we built one of the weapons from the show? Yeah. And Dad and I instantly knew what it was we wanted to build. That's right. Moth Gideon's lightsaber. Rifle. Or the Mandalorian's pulse rifle. Right. So we decided, let's build the Mandalorian rifle, but let's build it using only parts that we bought from Home Depot. So we ran down to Home Depot and picked up everything we needed. And after we have finally completed it, I can definitely say that our finished product is most impressive. So we're going to show you how to build that step by step. So stay tuned. This is the way. So I want to trace out the basics of this, of the stock and the receiver, mm -hmm. so that we can cut these out first. Yeah. So. I'm going to let you trace this because of my shaky hand. Okay, so we're going to start tracing this material down. My hand shakes, so uh, I'm going to let Dylan do the tracing. So now we're going to look at measuring this out. The overall length of the rifle is going to be 55 inches. Now, the first barrel, the top large barrel, is going to be a 1 inch diameter and it's going to be 28 inches long. Now the bottom barrel is going to be 18 inches. All right, dude, you've got this cut out now. And we're ready to go as a template. We're going to basically glue it down on top of this and use that as our template to cut out. Now the easiest way to do that is a can of Elmer's. There you go. Yep, shake it up. And I'm just using the Elmer's spray adhesive, but you can buy about any kind of a, of a spray glue. And we just dust it like that. Let's try it right here. So let's take it, we're going to flip it over. Okay. And I'm going to use the top of this as the alignment here to here. and then just kind of push it down on there. And man, it barely fits. But that's that's exactly what we want. So now um, we're going to cut this part out, but also while we're doing it, we're going to want to save another piece that's going to be that front... Yeah, the front bayonet looking thing. No, the grip. The oh. wood grip on the barrel. Oh, so okay. we'll do that next. Okay, so now we're ready to start cutting this thing out. So we're going to want to make sure we protect our ears and our eyes. So using the miter saw, you're going to cut your basic length off of this. But keep in mind, you're going to use the band saw to cut the basic shape. But you can also see that five and a half inch by inch and a half piece of the front stock that you'll cut out later. Take your time and uh, a good sharp blade helps. So I know we're going to want to make the stock start here. Then I want the barrel to hit the length that I need. It's going to need to come back. And I'm just estimating, but I'm going to say here is put this on the band saw, or not the band saw, excuse me, on the, the table saw, and we're gonna groove out one inch. So we know we've got to cut one inch out of here. That's only going to allow a very slight uh, side, so I'm gonna have to be very careful when cutting that. Also, the barrel will also be an inch deep, so we know that's gotta come in an inch also. So let's move to that. Okay, you can stop that. We're going to move outside and use the uh, table saw to do our basic cuts. And I'm going to use a series of small cuts to make all of our grooves come out. And that way I just trim this out and the barrel should fit in this just fine. Hey. The barrel's going to fit in there just right. I think we're good. So yeah. that's... So now I'm going to start to cut out that inch and a half 
by 5 inch piece. But I'm going to leave the top piece on so I can cut the grooves for the barrel first before trimming that piece off. There's our lock. Now this is going to have to be sanded. You're not going to want to sand anything beyond this line all the way here. And so now you're going to dish this in, this, and just kind of work it here with the belt sander the best we can. I gave the job to Dylan. He started working this down and in honesty, it, you're going to have to put some time into this. We're looking at probably a good 30, 40 minutes of bringing it down and then just hand sanding that surface down. Also then rounding that front part of the stock and putting the grooves in so you can see that in the design as well. Now using a spindle sander and I have a link and I'll put up above for this little sander. I love this thing and it does a great job. This is a little larger than we want but it's going to need to fit down here like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So to do that we're going to have to use what's called a Forsner bit, and I'm just going to eyeball it here a little ways. Okay, that should be enough. Yeah. That's good. So that you're gonna, hold it. So you're going to glue that, right? Yeah, we'll put glue into that. Now I used the router table to groove this section into the front of the stock, but you could use the table saw or even a hand router to accomplish the same thing. You call this the bayonet? Yeah. Okay, you need to cut the bayonet out and you can cut that straight down, but we need to cut this out of paper and use that as a pattern and also put it on that board and we just need to cut one of those. This piece, which, what do you think that is? I think it's like a bayonet, but like lightning things come off of it in the show. So. Cool. Um. Alright. You have the piece that will help connect. Bottom tube has to fit in to that. Right. right. Okay. We've got this piece, which we need two of, and this piece, which we need two of. So now we're going to use some of this which is a MDF board to, uh, to glue these down and then I'm going to start cutting them out. Now the pieces that we're going to be cutting out are basically just drawn on or guesstimated as to looking at photographs of the, the Mandalorian rifle. Yeah, mm -hmm. You're going to need to take Put these two face down onto here so I can cut them out. This has really been a fun project for teaching my son how to approach different projects and work with materials. Grab that piece, like this. grab that panel that's down below you. Like line it up. Right. So I don't have to cut that. So now cutting each of these pieces, oh, I doubled up the material and just take your time, but you're basically just using your own imagination to kind of fill in the blanks. Um, we did realize after cutting out the bayonet that we needed to cut a second one. Done. Now this is made to pop it apart into two pieces. So let's see what we can do with that. So Dad broke the gun. Yeah, so I managed to break <laughs> the gun. You know, mistakes are going to happen. No matter what you do, you're going to break something or screw something up. So be prepared work with it don't get upset just fix it that's part of woodworking and craft that's part of the fun of it okay. 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 
going to take this, I'm going to go ahead and mm. glue, glue it, it on, on while it's gluing. Now, it never hurts to have clamps. I pick up as many clamps anytime I'm out. If I see a, a deal on clamps, I buy more. Rotary tools. Now, I'm just going to add in design, including cutting pieces, whatever works to help build the look and the shape of the rifle. I'm kind of just winging it here and then building up the pieces and the design as I go. Just gluing them down and then once again I'm going to come back and be clamping all of this material down. I want to make sure that I align it to the same on both sides so that when I put something on the bottom and top it's easy to align all those pieces as well. The MDF material cuts easy and sands well and is a great product to use with this. I'm going to cut another piece where I'm kind of just freelancing the design of this a bit. I'm going to trim it down and then even put the grooves in utilizing the belt sander for that shape. I'm going to set this piece down in and then after every thing dries, is clamped down and dries, I'll come back later and sand that smooth. Now I'm going to cut the back part of the, the gun stock that has some grooves on top and Dylan's going to glue that down into place. This has been a great project for Dylan and I to do together and I've just really enjoyed working with him on this. Now we went ahead and we cut two of the bayonets, so he's going to glue these up and then once again using more clamps, we will hold those down and let those dry as well. Now that everything has uh, dried overnight, I'm going to come back, remove the clamps and take a look at this, and I'm feeling like this is really starting to look like the gun in the, in the photos that we've seen. Now, I went ahead and pre-cut a few pieces. This is a piece to fit into the bottom. I'll clamp that into place, and I'll let that sit for a while. Looks like everything's clamped down, so Dylan's gonna do some sanding on the bayonet as well as the gun itself. And while he's working on that, I'm gonna take an inch and a half pipe clamp, and I'm gonna use this to design and bend the shape for the trigger guard. So using clamping down, using a vise, and just kind of bending this around, tapping it into place, I eventually get this into the shape that I need. I like the way that looks. I think we're going to be fine with it. And uh, that's going to work. Dylan will re-drill a hole for the mounting pieces in this and then we'll do a couple more design pieces for the sides of the gun as well. We keep looking at photos and work and then also using a 1 and 3 8 dowel which is basically used for coat racks. I'm going to do the front of the, the piece that holds the bayonet. Using a one inch oh, yeah. forcer saw, that works perfect. And then I'll trim this down. And then I'm gonna cut the groove that should be able to hold the bayonet into place. Okay, that's gonna work. So now I'll give that back to Dylan and he can kind of work that down into that cone shape. We'll get it all glued up and set it in place. Let that dry. Now these are some of the more decorative pieces and we're going to add those on and glue them on and then Dylan will go ahead and spray paint the barrel and some of the other pieces. While those are drying I'm going to take and mask out the gun stock itself so that I can separate out where the 
silver parts of the barrel or the metal parts of the barrel will be. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to use a silver paint that is a primer and finish coat in one and lay a coat of silver. Now I'm going to pre-fit the trigger guard to make sure that I have my holes lined up along with also figuring out where that trigger is going to need to fit. So designing that out on a piece, Dylan's going to cut it out. And then I'll use the rotary tool to cut a groove down into the body and fit that in. I think that's going to work fine. We'll come back to that a little later. Right now we're going to go ahead and start staining the gun stock. I'm using some American Walnut Minwax Stain and just carefully paint up to the silver and lay the stain down on the body of the gun. While I'm doing this, Dylan is going to go ahead and uh, get the stain work done on that front receiver as well. You're going to want to smooth this out, get it all laid on, and then set it aside to dry. While that stuff is drying, I'm going to take one of the half inch pieces of PVC connectors. I'm going to cut this in half. And this is going to be the pieces that hold the scope like a cradle. And if you look at the designs, you can see that. Cutting a piece of brass half inch tubing and also picking up some half inch connectors to three quarter inch, I'm going to make the design of the scope. I think that's going to work fine and this will be the center section but now the inside of this has a bit of a ridge in it so I'm going to also take the rotary tool and I'm going to just smooth that out so that I'll be able to slide that down on top of the the barrel of this or the the scope body to make that fit that's a good snug fit this is going to work fine I'm going to glue all these pieces together and I think we got a scope ready to go. Cutting some schedule 40, I'm going to cut the barrel that will hold the scope along with a couple of pieces that are also on the barrel right up next to the body. Using a piece of PVC plastic that I picked up at Home Depot, I'm going to make the scope mounts. I'm going to cut these out and do, this will make the L shape that fits on the back of the body. And I'm going to use the heat gun. I'm going to heat this material up. And it heats very, very easily, but I would use gloves. And then using a, a good wood block, I can get that bend on there that I need that I can set down. And you can see how that's going to be the bracket that holds the scope. Now putting that into place, I'm going to glue the half inch piece that I cut on the bandsaw that's going to make the cradle for the scope. Gluing that down, getting it to set, I'm going to use one of these clamps just to hold on to it and keep it out of the way. Now using that same concept, I'm going to do the same thing for the scope mount that fits on the barrel. That's a piece of Schedule 40, piece of the PVC and then a piece of the half inch that was cut in half to glue down on it making the scope mount. Now coming back I'm going to use some of that schedule 40 and I'm going to trim two rings around and cut a piece that's going to hold that lower end barrel and fit on the barrel. Cutting some of the PVC into three pieces, I'm going to glue these pieces together and these are going to be the receiver of that lower barrel as well. I'm going to clamp those, set them aside, and let them dry. So while those are drying, I'm going to take these two pieces for the scope that I built, I'm going to go paint them with some gold. Now that this is dried, I'm going to go ahead and create a curve that will fit on the barrel shape and then also come down and drill a hole directly underneath it that will hold that half inch pipe that is the lower barrel. I'm going to also mark that angled cut and do a beveled edge that will fit that round piece and then go ahead and cut that 45 degree. That finishes that piece for the front. 
I'll go ahead and get that sanded up a bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue that down to the Schedule 40 pipe. I think that's going to look pretty good. I'll set that aside to glue for now, too. Now, using another piece of the pipe clamps, I'm going to take that, cut it in half for each of the bands that hold the two barrels together, and a piece of that Schedule 40, and trim that out to accept that. And then I heated them up and squeezed them together. There may be some other options you could come up with, but this seemed to be the best for me. For the wood forward wood part of the strap, I'm going to cut some of this PVC strap or pieces in half, making a thin piece that I can heat up and then wrap around the front wood stock. This is also going to help to give it that look of the, uh, the clamps that hold the two barrels together. I'm going to trim those up along with the back one and all these pieces after I have them trimmed are going to go and be sprayed silver. Along with the silver paint I'm going to take the uh, bayonet which I had sprayed with the copper or the gold color. I'm going to spray that basic piece on the end silver. Now Dylan's going to come back and he's going to mark go. where to put the rivets that go around the front of the the gun. Setting some some rivets in there. This is all decorative but it's going to give it a really cool industrial look to it. I'm happy with how this is starting to look. So now we're going to go ahead I think that looks Looks like a funky shotgun right now. So now, let's look at how we're going to mount the scope on this. We're going to mount the first, the back side of the scope mount, which actually goes back onto the body of the gun. So we'll want to mount how those line up. And looking at some of the photos, we'll match that up and mark it off. Now I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill these holes and then I'm going to come back with a larger bit and do a countersink and be very careful that you do not over drill those. You just want them deep enough to hold the metal screws. So now I'm going to hold this in place. We'll drill these down and then go ahead and screw the metal screws down into the body that will hold the scope mount. Now you're going to start assembling the rings that go on to the barrel. Using a half inch piece, I'm going to hot glue that down. I had sprayed it black and that slides down onto the barrel, which is the first ring. Now the second ring is the second or the front scope mount. So I'm going to bring that on, but I'm not sure where to connect that. So we're going to align the scope and make sure that that is straight. Once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and put a pop rivet into the scope mounts that's up on the scope itself. Once that's put into place we can then kind of straighten that, align it, and put a screw into the barrel of the gun that's going to lock the scope down tight. Okay that looks pretty good. Let's make sure it's straight. I'm liking the way this is looking. This is coming together really really well. So now let's look at putting the trigger into place. We're going to fill the hole that I had used the rotary tool with some hot glue and push that trigger down into place. Once that's into place we're going to pre-drill for the trigger guard and screw that down along with the back of it as well. Okay, now we're going to slide down that front piece and fit the bayonet onto the front. We've got to determine how wide that lower piece is and it looked like looks like it's going to be about 18 inches. So I'm going to go back and cut this piece to 18 inches. I'm going to take it over to the 
saw real quick. Now that I've cut this down to 18 inches, I'm going to slide this down into the two clamps, into the barrel, and into that lower receiver. And after I get that into place, I think we're going to need to add some hot glue to help secure it into the body of the gun. So a little bit of a squeeze in that, and then we can fit the lower barrel down into the gun body. That's going to fit just fine. Now we'll put the front grip receiver. We'll make sure that aligns properly. And I'm going to put some hot glue on that to help hold it into place and make sure that that's straight. Now the band that I had made and I've now sprayed it silver, we're going to set that into place and actually we'll put a little hot glue to help hold that into place as well. Now we can put the end of the lower barrel receiver on the larger barrel and shoving it down into place and making sure all of this fits. This looks like it's going to be really well and it's all straight. We're going to go ahead and set a pop rivet down into this part of the barrel that's going to lock it into place. So now we're ready to connect what we call the bayonet. Put a little hot glue down and then squeeze the bayonet into place. Now once we have that squeezed in, we're going to want to hold it up and look down the barrel and make sure that that is straight. Is that good? I think so. Just don't pull the trigger. I'm, I'm standing right here and I don't want to be oops, uh, vaporized or whatever it is. So I think we should probably put a rivet here and here. Oh, okay. what do you think? Just yeah, that's fine. Lock that in? Yeah, just keep it there. Okay. I'm going to put a link to all the materials listed in this so that you can go online and either order them or get a full listing of all the pieces that you're going to need. So now after I've drilled and pop riveted the top and bottom, I think this gun, if you wanted it to look like a new piece, you're pretty well there. But now we're going to want to make this look more battle worn. So taking some black acrylic paint, water-based paint, I'm going to thin it down till it's almost a stain. And using a rag and some rubber gloves, I'm going to start rubbing this down on everything. And this gives us a really cool looking, like it's got a little age to it and a little wear to it. And gives it a really believable look. I'm really, really happy with how this is starting to come together. I'm going to take a little bit of purple and spray it on the bayonet. This can help it to give that, that heat look. Also a little bit of green around the scope gives it that brass oxidizer. I'm going to put a water base, I've never used this, a water base clear coat onto it just to basically seal the whole thing up. And I'm trying to think what's the best way to do this so I'm just going to Now this is totally different than anything I've ever used. Hey, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as we enjoyed making it. I hope you guys will give it a try. It was a really fun project. So if you want to see any more videos from DIY Gene, just make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more updates. In the meantime, I'll see you soon. All right, come on. So we gotta go save Baby Yoda. Da 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 da.